Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank, and today we're going to be flashing some firmware. Okay, so flashing your firmware. That sounds scary. Uh, it scared the crap out of me when I first got into this hobby and I didn't understand what people were talking about. Why would you flash the firmware? Isn't the firmware that comes on the printer, isn't this just fine? What do I have to do that for? What's wrong with Creality's firmware? As you go on and on, you start to learn that though a manufacturer might have put good R&D into a product, typically, once they release that product, they've peaked at that production. There's no point in them improving it, typically. Now, some, that's not every company. Some companies do release updated firmware, and that's great. Creality sometimes doesn't, but there are other companies who wanna make this product even better by just focusing on the firmware. What can they improve? What can they reprogram? What can they amplify? Did Creality take full advantage of everything that they put into the system? Well, TH3D, Tiny Machines, a um, couple other have uh, released updated firmware for basically every 3D printer out there. I, I, I don't think there's many printers that don't have um, new firmware, even the Annette a a A8s have new firmware. So I wanna be taking you guys through uh, two things. This is video one, and this is gonna be just how to flash your firmware. It's very simple to do. I'm gonna be using TH3D's firmware, and there's a link down below what to download, and you'll see everything how to do that. The second video, if you're interested in what to do after that with a flashed mainboard, and we're, I'm gonna show you guys what a mainboard looks like, but you don't need to have it out of the printer to, in order to flash it, okay? And I'll show you guys what that looks like. And then if you wanna go and learn how to actually put in a new mainboard in a CR-10S, and this pretty much applies to any CR-10 line. Um, it applies to the, the 10, the 10S, the S4, the S5, I think even the V2. Now, if it's an all-in-one kind of printer, like the Pro or the Max, then this, this is still kind of similar. It just won't have this separate control box. You have to just take something else apart. And it's typically wherever you, your USB port is. Uh, that's where your main board is. So the first thing you have to figure out before you're gonna flash any hardware is, does your printer have a bootloader on it? And what I mean by that is a bootloader is a, a, a chipset or a, a feature of the main board that basically allows it to be plugged right into your computer and be read by an Arduino program. You don't. All you gotta do is do some Googling. Um, there's tons of information out there already. The CR10S's, uh, the S5's, the S4's, the Pro's, they all come with bootloaders pre-installed, which means you can plug them right in, flash the firmware, take it back you know, and call it a day. Uh, printers like the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro do not have a bootloader in them. So you're gonna need to get one of these little fancy bootloader chips, USB sticks, pretty easy to set up and deal with. And maybe, uh, maybe I'll make a video for that one day when I try to upgrade my Ender 3. But for now, we're gonna be focusing on printers that already have a bootloader installed. And if you can figure out how to get one for the printer you're trying to do, you're gonna follow all these same steps. You just had one extra step thrown in the mix. So this is a 3D printer mainboard. This is a Creality CR10S mainboard. It's a little motherboard, you know, it's very simple. All your connections, all your stepper motors, all your triggers, your power supply, everything goes to this. And then you can also see your SD card, micro SD card slots right there next to your USB slot. And both of these are very, very actually important to the main board, because you can see the USB cable plugs right in. And if you've ever heard anybody say that if you wear down your SD card slot, you're gonna need to swap your whole main board, well that's why, it's built in. And this main board sits upside down inside this control box. Now, this can sit really anywhere in your printer depending on the model and make, but basically where your SD card slot and USB port is, that's, that's where you're gonna be able to tell where your main board is. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how to flash this main board. This is an old main board to my other CR-10S. I actually went and swapped it for a silent main board. And this is a silent main board for an Ender 5 Plus. And this would be plug and play drop if I had an Ender 5 Plus. But since I'm doing it for Creality CR-10S, it's compatible, but I need to flash the firmware. So that's why I'm kind of doing this. This one's already flashed. This one isn't. This is the stock one out of my old CR-10S. And we're gonna go through, I'm gonna show you guys how to flash this and plug this in. So you don't need to pull the main board to do this. Okay, this one's already out. It's very simple to do. Plug in the USB cable, plug it into your computer. This is gonna get a couple blue lights on it. If this lights up blue, you're plugged in, good to go. If you don't have the main board out, all you have to do is run a USB cable and plug it into the side of your printer. Don't power your printer on. Don't use the actual power cable. If anything, I'd unplug it because this is just gonna load up the main board and your control screen. It's not gonna give you, it's not gonna actually power up your power supply and you don't wanna start heating things when you don't need to. So get this plugged in, make sure it's turned on. Either the board will turn on 
outside of the box or the printer will turn on and your screen will light up and you're ready to go. So let's hop over to the computer and I can show you guys what to do next. So once you have it plugged in, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to th3d.com, 3htdstudio.com, and I'll leave a link below, or whatever firmware package you wanna get, but this is the one I use, and it should operate the same way uh, flashing your firmware with the, the bootloader. So you're gonna download the latest firmware. This is pretty easy to do. It's gonna download, it's a pretty big file. So just let it go and give it some time. And you're gonna end up with a zip file like this. So once you download it, you're gonna wanna go in, right click and extract all, it's gonna give you a folder. Go in and then you're gonna see down here, open firmware windows. If you're using Windows, hopefully you are. And if not, you're using Mac, there's other guides on uh, the website to follow to help you out, but open it up. All right, once you get it open, you're gonna need to make sure that this Arduino program is actually able to read your main board or your printer or whatever. So there's two things you wanna do. You're gonna to wanna to come down here and you're gonna to wanna to select a COM port. Now, I've never plugged it in and it's been COM port one. Typically it's whatever COM port that is assigned to wherever you plugged it in, it'll automatically assign a COM port. And I've had this be three, I've had this be uh, six. So today it's seven. So I usually do just automatically switch to whatever the latter one is. And once that's switched, you're gonna to wanna to go to serial monitor. Now, if nothing pops up or pops up in a bunch of just weird texts, you're actually gonna to wanna to go down here and you're gonna to wanna to go through these different values. And for mine, it's actually this uh, 115,000 and then it's gonna reload. And you can cycle through this until you get one that works. Again, that one didn't work, 500,000 didn't work. So it's this one for the uh, CR10S and you'll know you got it because it will actually display what firmware is on the main board. Now I flashed this one last year with this um, this update, but typically it would read just a little bit different. And this is the firmware I currently have on it. It's Marlin. If it's giving you something like this that you can read, you should be in the right uh, area. That's good, perfect, awesome. You can close this out. You know you're actually talking to that main board. So you can close that out. And then you're gonna wanna come over to Configuration H. And this has all of the programs in it. This has everything you're gonna need. Now, you're gonna have to read the guide to kind of figure out which one you're gonna wanna mess with. Since I'm messing with a CR10S and the Control F feature does work pretty well, you can type in CR10S and then find. So there's the Creality op output options. And what you're gonna wanna do is, this one's already defined, so we're gonna undefine it. And this is how you select what's gonna get made and compiled and actually loaded into the program. Because right now, this is just all data that's saved into the, uh, the package you downloaded. But it's not gonna compile the firmware unless you let it. So this is all just typed in data, and all you do is you unselect define. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna define what's programmed for the CR10S and load it. And when it compiles the firmware, it's gonna do everything you want for the CR10S. And you can go through and there's tons of stuff you can read. You can spend as much time as you want in here, but there's actually a couple other things you can mess around with and define. They're typically near the bottom. So let's see what else we can mess with. So you have a bunch of things down here defined uh, that are just automatically in the program. So that's good, that's cool. Uh, let's see, standalone, stepper drivers, they're misters. Okay, let's keep scrolling down. Hey guys, real quick, while editing this video, I realized that I never actually touched upon thermal runaway protection. Now that's probably the biggest reason you'd wanna flash your mainboard, and you might've seen that uh, feature talked about in some of the forums and groups and pages. Thermal runaway protection. Does my printer have it? Is it safe? Do I need it? Do I want it? Yes, you do. Um, some of the Ender 3s, I'm uh, pretty sure all the Ender 3s, the C uh, Creality CR10 S's, I think the S4s and S5s, don't come with it enabled. It's not in the firmware. And basically what thermal runaway protection means is if the hot end starts to heat up just rapidly and wildly and the temperature starts to fluctuate too inconsistently, it's going from 200 to 250 down to 150 or it starts heating up past what the parameters were set. Now you want your, you want your nozzle to be at 200, but it's starting to climb and climb and climb and climb. Your printer needs to be able to understand what's happening. Now that could be your thermistor broken. There could be a lot of problems in that. All that matters though is there's thermal runaway happening and that can act, that's what can actually start fires. That's what the biggest fear of everybody is, is being making sure your main board, making sure your printer, making sure your house is safe. So I just wanted to make sure I touched on that. Flashing your firmware and going through this whole list that I'm gonna go and show you uh, in there hidden and I'll, I'll 
pull a little snippet out to show where it is. But that's how you actually go and enable thermal runaway, at least on the TH3D software. So that's how you will go and the main reason why, why I would flash my mainboard. Now there, again, there's other features and upgrades and benefits, but that has to be the biggest upgrade for this. Let's get back to the video and I just wanted to make sure I touched on that. So right here, this is actually a pretty cool one. This is the time for your thermal runaway protection. And these are in seconds and you can actually uh, modify these and it don't make it over 300 seconds. And this is how long your printer is going to uh, deal with a thermal runaway and actually start looking for the difference in your um, hot end versus what the thermistor is reading versus what it's trying to actually heat the hot block, to, the heat block too. So this is, you have 60 seconds or 180 seconds depending on the, the time. So since I'm actually flashing a silent board, I'm gonna come over here and I needed to make sure I'd undefined this. So I'm so since I'm using that main board, the, the silent TMC main board, I wanted to actually affect this. And then you have some boot screen options. So it'll you can modify this and make it define uh, tiny machines boot screen you can make it to uh, dis you can disable the boot screen completely you can adjust the home auto adjust so when it goes to print at home it'll always move 10 x 10 y you can enable power loss recovery but this does a little bit of um uh, this wears your sd card a little bit more but this is a little cool add-on you can actually put in here and then here this is a pretty cool one you can actually change the name of your printer and as long as you undefine this you change in parentheses whatever you want your printer name to be and i changed this one to jarvis uh, you can change it to uh, Frank's printer. You can do really whatever you want with it. And then we'll put this back to Jarvis. And this is what will display when your printer's sitting there ready to go. This one's pretty cool too. If your printer's moving too fast, basically, it'll uh, actually slow your auto home feature. If it's just kind of slamming into those end stops, this will uh, make it work a little less aggressively. Like I said, you can read through this all day and just kind of mess with what you want, but as long as you un you undefine the proper printer that you want, it it'll work just fine. And there's tons more information on the TH3D website that you can read through, but this is just the kind of the basic simple way to do it. Um, let's see, pretty sure there's an Ender. Oh, actually, that's, that was pretty funny. I wanted to find the Ender 3 and it was immediately right there. So there's the Ender 2 and here's the Ender 3. So if I was using the Ender 3, I would undefine this and so on and so forth. That's totally fine. It has easy able, um, for just a bunch of different hot ends and it's a really intuitive program. So again, our CR10S is undefined and there's just a bunch of more data hiding all through these tabs, but the configuration H is the only one you wanna worry about. And then what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna verify. And what this is gonna do, it, it's the program itself is gonna run, it's gonna comp compile the sketch for programming and it's gonna make sure that it's actually coherent, there's no errors and everything should go pretty smoothly. You actually see a little progress bar down here while it's actually compiling everything. And then down here, it's gonna tell you exactly how much data it's in storage it's actually gonna use. And it seems to be working just fine. So it's gonna actually use 51% of the storage space and everything looks pretty good. So once that's done compiling, we know we have everything loaded, you're actually gonna go ahead and upload it. And this is gonna flash the firmware that's already on there, erase it and upload the new firmware. Okay, that's it. We're done uploading. And then you're going to go and either install your main board into your printer, or if you're, you know, you're just flashing a pre-installed main board that has a bootloader, then you're good and ready to go. And that's it. You can start printing. So honestly, guys, that's kind of it. it flashing main boards isn't that hard. Now you can spend as much time as you want reading through TH3D's website or reading about the tiny machines firmware. Like that's totally up to you. This is literally just how to do it. And again, your, if your main board's removed and you're about to install it, very easy to flash, plug it in. If it's still installed in your printer, plug it in, flash it that way. And if it's already installed in your printer like this, it is in the CR-10S, you can turn it on and take it for a spin. That's, that's perfectly fine, you're ready to go. So if you guys have any questions, drop a comment down below, message me on Instagram, Twitter, uh, join the Discord. We, have, we just launched a Discord, which is great. Um, um, it's already up to 100 plus members, and it's just a bunch of nerds talking about cosplay and 3D printing. Uh, if you're new to it and you wanna learn something, join. If you're a veteran and you wanna to try to help other people, join. It's open to everybody, it's free. Come take a look. Uh, if Discord's not your thing, drop a comment down below, that's fine. So I also launched a Patreon. If you guys could go check the link down below if you're interested in that and supporting the channel and in supporting what I'm doing to kinda of take some of the funds and the costs off of my shoulders, it'd be cool. Open it, take a look, read it. If you're interested, cool. If you're not, move on, that's totally fine. I appreciate everything you guys have been doing. This is like awesome. I, I love doing this stuff. I love teaching you guys how to do this stuff because you know, it was, it was scary at first to me. And, oh man, how am I gonna do this? I don't know how to program. I don't know how to do this. Like, 
Arduino, like it, it was overwhelming and being able to talk more confidently about it and understand it better, I just want to be able to like show that to you guys and I hope that's the message is getting translated properly, I really do. So thank you for everything, thanks for watching and have a good day.